Durham University's largest donor has stopped donating money and will instead fund the fight for free speech. Retired hedge fund manager Mark Hillary has gifted more than £7 million over the last few years, but says that they're not going to get another penny unless they get their free speech house properly in order. His decision comes after a rise in what he considers campus wokery, which has seen speakers banned and academics bullied out for voicing their opinions. That money is now going to the Free Speech Union. And founder and director Toby Young is with me now. Toby, thanks for joining me. Uh, this is fantastic that uh, one of these alumni that often gives yeah, yeah. lots of money to the universities is now going to you, where it's going to do a whole lot more good, frankly. Yes, I mean, uh, it is absolutely fantastic. And I hope other uh, alumni donors um, to other universities uh, follow his lead. Um, and instead of giving money to their old universities, instead give it to the Free Speech Union if they're concerned about the erosion of free speech at their alma mater. But yeah, no, that... we're, we, we've, we've done a lot in, in Durham itself. Before coming on the show, Andrew, I checked to see how many individual cases the Free Speech Union has been involved with at Durham University specifically uh, since it was founded in February 2020. And the answer is 15, um, which uh, was higher than I was expecting it to be. But to give you an example of the kind of thing I'm talking about, we uh, went to bat for a, a young student at Durham um, who was expelled after a series of complaints because for instance, um, he was opposed to gay marriage. He was a traditional Catholic. Um, he took Israel's side in the Israel, Israeli-Palestine conflict. And these things made his fellow students feel unsafe, these opinions, and complaints were lodged. And incredibly, the university expelled him. He was the first uh, member of his family to go to university, um, but uh, he was expelled. And with our help, he complained to the Office of the Independent Adjudicator for Higher Education. Um, that appeal was upheld, and the adjudicator uh, insisted that Durham take him back and also fine Durham. So Durham had to pay him compensation for the um, uh, inconvenience of being expelled for a year and having to delay his university education by a year. That's just one example of the kind of thing the Free Speech Union can do to protect free speech at universities. I mean, this is something that people need to realise, don't they, that actually when you stand up to these people and when you've got the support of, of organisations like your own, uh, you know, the right outcome does occur. It's just that so many people don't realise that pushing back is the way forward. Do, do you find that that's the case? Yes. I mean, I thought that um, we'd have more of a struggle um, uh, coming to the defence of people placed under investigation uh, for saying perfectly lawful things, but which someone has found offensive and which the university has decided to take seriously uh, the complaints. Um, I thought we'd have more difficulty. Um, uh, but actually, uh, surprisingly, if you push back robustly, um, if we get our chief legal counsel or one of our legal officers involved, um, in some cases, we have to threaten to go to law. But as soon as you push back robustly. And as soon as you make it clear that um, we're going to hold them to account, we're going to make sure they follow their own processes scrupulously and don't try and create kangaroo courts and assume guilt before the whole process really gets underway. Um, it's remarkable how quickly uh, they'll fold. Um, uh, it, ultimately, um, the reason university authorities do the bidding of these woke activists is because they want a quiet life. They're not necessarily ideologically on the same side. They just want to take the path of least resistance. So if you can increase the cost of doing the bidding of the activists and make it clear that um, you're going to make even more noise if they ride roughshod over a student or an academic's free speech, they'll capitulate. When it comes to this issue of donations, I remember when we had the Roads Must Fall campaign in Oxford. And the reason I or so I heard the reason the Rhodes statue wasn't removed from Oriel College is that a number of donors, former alumni, uh, said that they weren't going to give any money anymore if they did this kind of thing. So is this going to be the way forward that actually it's about money, really? And they, they, they respond to that. Yeah, you're absolutely right. I think that was absolutely critical um, in the battle to save the statue of Cecil Rhodes at Oxford. It was only when Oriel College announced that they would be removing the statue um, and various alumni donors said, well, in that case, we're going to stop giving any money to the university, to, to, to the college, that the college did an immediate vault fast and the statue remains standing to this day. Uh, an organisation was set up 
uh, last year called Alumni for Academic Freedom. And it's, it's, it's ra- the rationale is that if you can bring together a large group of alumni donors, and if you can, if you can say to universities or colleges that if they do ride roughshod over free speech, if they don't do more to honor the own, their own free speech policies and obligations, that funding's going to be withdrawn. It's remarkable how quickly they'll sit up and start paying attention. It is a language that academic institutions really understand. And to what extent, uh, in order to win this battle, do we need to get the students on side? Because, you know, I recently gave a talk at Gombal and Keys College in Cambridge, and I spoke to a number of the students, and they, they quite clearly were just as sick of this kind of stuff as anyone else, which I found quite encouraging. Has that been your experience? Yes, I think, I mean... Um, I like to think that um, the majority of students are actually fair-minded. Um, they, they, they don't, they don't, uh, they're not made to feel unsafe when someone like Rod Liddell is invited to give an after-dinner speech, which was the complaint at Durham uh, last year. Um, it's only a small minority who are bullying the rest. Um, uh, but uh, there was rather a depressing stat in a recent uh, survey for the Higher Education Policy Institute, which was published, the survey was published in June of last year, which found that 79% of students at, um, I think, English universities uh, b- believe that students that feel threatened should always have their demands for safety respected. So that suggests we've got our battle to cut out, cut out for us. And given that being the case, could you perhaps give our viewers before you go just uh, some information about how they can find out more about the Free Speech Union or where indeed they can join? Sure, Andrew. Um, so um, if if anyone is interested, they can go to our homepage, which is freespeechunion.org. Uh, the homepage at the moment um, is a list of everything we've achieved in 2022 and what we're hoping to achieve in 2023. Um, and you can click on uh, one of the join buttons on that page. If you're a student, if you're on benefits, if you're a veteran, if you're retired, um, it's only twenty four ninety five a year. Full membership uh, is uh, 49.95 a year. You can pay that monthly. Uh, and the reason we're able to keep these membership fees so low is because of generous donations from people like Mark Hillary, which subsidizes our work and subsidizes um, uh, our, our membership fees. Toby Young, thank you very much for joining me.